You know, as a kid, you never really assume that your life is going to turn out the way that it could, especially in a situation like mine where I spent most of my life locked up. If I was to try to think back on what exactly went wrong in my life to cause me to turn out the way that I did for much of my life that was so messed up and wrong, well, I guess I would definitely have to say that that happened while I was a teenager because I had a normal childhood, actually a really good upbringing. I had two parents that loved me, a little brother. My life was pretty normal until I entered my teenage years. To actually try to draw my life, I don't know where else to begin except for the very beginning. So with that, I guess I'll just start there. I was born November 20th, 1982. My mother spent 18 hours in labor with me. And she would later tell me in life, that it was because of how long she spent in labor. She knew that I was gonna be a hellion. My mother was a beautiful woman. And my father, he was pretty awesome too. I come from a military family. My father was in the Navy for 30 plus years. I used to consider him like a GI Joe when I was a kid. And as I got older, I can remember bringing girlfriends home and those girlfriends just thinking that he was like the hottest dad ever. It was actually kind of crazy. In this picture here, I was about three years old. My dad was young. And also in this picture, you can't really see him too well. But on the right side, over there in the corner, that's my grandfather. His name was Joe too. When I was three years old, my little brother was born. Craziest damn thing about it is, my little brother's birthday is November the 19th. Mine is the 20th. We were born something like three years apart, or two years and 364 days. I'm not exactly sure what the math is on that. And another crazy thing, aside from the fact that me and my brother's birthdays are only separated by one day, is the fact of where we both were born at. I was born in a place called Brunswick, Maine. I really have no idea about anything from Maine. And as for my brother, well, he wasn't even born in this country. He was actually born in Scotland. I really don't know too much about this picture right here. Hell, this could have been taken anywhere, Maine. Scotland, even California when we lived there. But the interesting thing to me about this picture is the fact that I've got this microphone in my hand and I'm standing here with this DJ of sorts and it's just me seeing this picture that makes me think at such a young age, I always tried to be some sort of an entertainer. And at some point as a little kid, I think I was kind of a fat baby. It's crazy to think that this was actually me. I also came from a family of animal lovers. For as long as I can remember, we always had Rottweilers in our family. In this picture, you can see me playing in the snow on a sled, literally getting pulled by one of these humongous dogs that we used to have. This was my family during Christmas time when me and my brother were both still really young. Here you can see just how excited I am receiving these toy guns, one of which even being a toy AK-47. Which is kind of ironic to me considering the whole Somalian pirate story that I've told here on After Prison Show and the whole pullover thing that we do so much here. This picture was taken somewhere around 1988 or 1989 when I used to be really big into Little League. This picture was also taken in California. And the crazy thing about that is, is that shortly before we moved to Virginia from California, I would actually go through one of the biggest earthquakes ever to hit California. It was like a 7.2 on the Richter scale. And though I was so young when this happened, I mean this literally happened somewhere between the ages of like seven and 10 years old. I still remember every single thing from that earthquake like it just happened yesterday. This has to be somewhere around 1990 or 1991, just after we had moved to Virginia from California. The crazy thing about this picture right here, aside from the fact that I must have been highly influenced by Vanilla Ice at this time, is what's actually in the background of this picture. That car that is in the background is actually that 1987 box style Nissan Maxima that I wrecked and almost killed myself in when I was 17 years old. I can remember me and my brother would spend a lot of time just playing outside, doing what normal kids did. We even had a go-kart. I can remember one time specifically wrecking that thing so bad, we literally went around this corner so fast and hit a tree stump. The go-kart must have flipped over like three times, completely throwing me and my brother out of this go-kart. 
I guess this is when I first started getting into trouble. I remember my parents were just then going through a divorce. I don't want to say that had anything to do with it at all. But for whatever reason, I started doing really dumb shit. I was living with my mom at the time, and for whatever reason, my dumb ass thought that if I wanted to make girls like me, I had to give them things. Well, what I ended up giving to these girls was like all of my mother's jewelry. I literally gave away all of my mom's jewelry to some girls at school just to try to make them like me. It was probably one of the stupidest things I ever did in my life. And I'll never forget when my mom found out about that. I was in the shower. She literally came into the shower, pulled back the shower curtain, and beat the shit out of me with this metal hanger. I don't think it was wrong what she did. I mean, I absolutely deserved what I got. My mother kicked me out, and I ended up having to go live with my father. I went from living in the country to living in the city. Going from basically being in an all-white school to a school where basically I was one of very few white people at that school. A big part of living with my dad was the fact that we were always around the water. Whether it was at the beach or on a boat, me and my little brother grew up kneeboarding and water skiing and always being in the water. And this was a crazy thing because I was completely scared to death of the water. I can remember always hating the feeling of jumping in the water and not really knowing what would be in that water with me. We would go fishing sometimes too, and I have to be honest with you, I hate fishing. In fact, the only thing that I ever caught while fishing was a starfish. I mean, who the hell catches a starfish? As I continue to get older and to really enter my teenage years, this is when the trouble really began for me. Me and my father started to argue a lot. We would fight. I was just a very troubled teen for some reason. And this is probably one of the most embarrassing pictures I've ever taken in my life. But this is actually me getting ready to go to the prom. The girl that I went to the prom with is actually the same girl that I got in the car accident with and almost died during that car accident. Drugs were also another thing that entered my life while I was a teenager. In pretty much every picture that I have of myself as a teenager, I look high as gas. And these are actually the last two pictures that I have of myself as a young adult. Here with my grandmother and in front of my dad's boat. And this last one here with my grandmother and her husband at my dad's house. I mean, look at my arms. I don't even have any tattoos really at this point. But this was most certainly from a time in my life where everything was just about to go completely downhill. And from this point on, there really aren't any pictures. If there was any, they were lost over time or were just thrown away. But this would be all of the years throughout my 20s that were just completely chaotic and out of control. Full of the many different times that I was in and out of jail, dealing with drug addictions that were completely taking over my life at the time, dealing with crazy friends and girlfriends and all sorts of negative situations that really had no good impact on my life at all. It was also during this time that my family basically just had to give up on me. They had to cut ties because I was doing nothing with myself to do any sort of good in my own life. And when you cause people pain for so long, what else can they really do? Maybe they spend time blaming themselves for why you turned out the way that you did, but eventually they get tired of doing that. And with that, sometimes it's best for them to just basically cut ties with you. And you know what? I'm not even mad at them for that. It was completely my fault. Everything that was going wrong in my life and all of the problems that I was having, all of the constant trouble that I was getting in, it was always completely my fault. So I could never be mad at them for deciding it's best to just not deal with me at all. If things were gonna change in my life, it was gonna have to be because I made those things change. And I had to prove to everybody who had given up on me that I was worth one more chance to finally get things right for myself. I came from a good life, a good family, people who cared for me and loved me. And for whatever reason, for a good majority of my life, I was just bad. I think good people can do bad things and I think bad things can happen to good people. But no matter what, when facing those type of situations in life, the ball is completely in your court for how things will go from there. And so far with this one last chance at life, with basically this new lease on life, I think I've been doing okay.